Did you know that there are some medications and chemicals that can actually cause hearing loss? Well, in this video, I'm covering everything that you need to know about these ototoxic agents. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. Ototoxic is just a fancy word to describe any substance that could cause damage to your ears. And there are a lot of ototoxic substances that can cause damage to your hearing organ, which is your cochlea, your vestibular system, which controls your balance, and the auditory nerve and vestibular nerve that actually take those signals from your ears to your brain. These substances that are harmful to your auditory system can come in the form of medications that you take orally or injected, and they can also come from different environmental exposures like to heavy metals, vapors, or even cleaning solutions. These chemical agents typically result in bilateral high-frequency sensory neural hearing loss, which is often permanent, and it can also cause tinnitus, which is ringing and buzzing inside of your ears, which is often the first sign that you're actually getting a hearing loss. When the balance system is affected, you can often experience vertigo, which is the sensation that you're moving when you're actually standing still. While there are a ton of medications that have a reported side effect of hearing loss, tinnitus, and balance issues, there are particular families of drugs that can be particularly ototoxic and vestibulotoxic. These families include aminoglycosides, loop diuretics, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, otherwise known as NSAIDs, chemotherapeutic agents, and anti-malarial agents, which are used to prevent malaria. Aminoglycosides are antibacterial medications which are typically taken in life-threatening situations and are particularly toxic when taken intravenously as opposed to taken orally. Some common aminoglycosides are streptomycin, gentamicin, neomycin, amikacin, canamycin, and tobramycin. The ototoxic effect of aminoglycosides is typically bilateral high-frequency sensory neural hearing loss and it is often permanent. Loop diuretics are often used to remove excessive fluid from the body. So if you're someone who experiences heart failure, hypertension, if you have edema or swelling, loop diuretics will help pull that water from your body. These loop diuretics are known to cause damage to the auditory system, which includes, and bear with me on pronunciation on these, furosemide, bumetanide, ethacrinic acid, and torsemide. Much like aminoglycosides, when you take a loop diuretic orally, it is not as bad for you as it is if you take it intravenously. If you take it intravenously, it can cause some nasty effects. The biggest difference, though, is that this bilateral high-frequency sensory neural hearing loss can typically go away after 24 to 48 hours after getting off of the loop diuretic. One thing that a lot of people don't know is that these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs that are used to treat headaches and fevers are actually really toxic to your hearing if you take them in large doses. Some of the common NSAIDs include aspirin, ibuprofen, celecoxib, and naproxen. Individuals who experience ototoxic effects from these drugs will often experience tinnitus first, followed by high-frequency sensory neural hearing loss. However, the ototoxic effects of these drugs typically subside after one to three days when you stop taking the medications. On a side note, it is widely speculated that radio personality Rush Limbaugh's hearing loss is due to the abuse of another drug called Vicodin which is a combination of the common analgesic acetaminophen along with hydrocodone, which ultimately led to his need for cochlear implants. Chemotherapeutic drugs often used to treat cancer are widely recognized to cause hearing loss, especially if they are platinum-based chemotherapeutic drugs. Drugs like cisplatin, carboplatin, vinblastine, and vincristine are known to cause bilateral high-frequency sensory neural hearing loss that is permanent. This hearing loss can progress into the low frequencies with time, and transient tinnitus is also common with these drugs as well. The ototoxic effects of chemotherapeutic drugs really depends on dosage and age. Obviously, the more dosage that you have or the more that you take of these drugs, the more effect it will have on your hearing, and also if you're on either end of the age spectrum. So if you're really old or really young, you're more susceptible as well. And quinine, which is an anti-malarial drug, is widely known to cause high-frequency sensory neural hearing loss that is reversible. The hearing loss caused by quinine is part of a condition called synchronism, which also results in dizziness, headaches, nausea, and vision changes. Now, if you are taking any medications at all, I highly recommend that you talk to your physician or to your pharmacist to see if any of the medications that you are taking have ototoxic effects. And if they do, ask them if there are any alternative drugs that are just as effective, but do not have those side effects. 
In addition to medication, there are some environmental factors that can also be ototoxic. These include heavy metals like mercury, manganese, and lead, and also some chemical agents, and bear with me again here, like styrene, toluene, trichloroethylene, and butyl nitrate. For individuals who work in a manufacturing setting or who work with heavy cleaning solutions, you may be exposing yourself to these chemicals. If you notice that your hearing is changing, whether it's to medications or other environmental factors, I highly recommend that you have your hearing tested right away. At the end of the day, some exposure to ototoxic medications may be required to preserve life. However, you should always be aware and cautious of these ototoxic agents and avoid them if at all possible. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you liked the video, please share it. If you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.